Hey, this is OXDF, and I'm looking at another challenge from the Hack the Boo CTF, our beginner-friendly Halloween-themed CTF from Hack the Box. Um, today, we're looking at a web challenge, Juggling Facts. Uh, with most of the web challenges, this one like this one, like all the others, you get a uh, IP import to visit your own personal instance, as well as a download of the files for the source. Uh, we'll start by taking a look at the IP import here, or visiting the instance and taking a look at the site. Um, I am running this through Burp. Um, I'll include a link here to the video where I talk about how I configured that with Foxy Proxy. Um, I have since that video added a rule to try to catch um, IP addresses and ports specified like this so that it gets forwarded on. Um, anyway, let's take a look at the site. So it's got some pumpkin facts here. Um, I don't know if they're even true or not. We've got some quotes at the bottom, nothing particularly fascinating. Um, there's these three buttons, spooky facts I can click. Um, not so spooky facts I can click and now I get different facts here. Okay. And if I click secret facts, uh, I get secrets can only be accessed by the admin. Pretty good hint that that's what I'm trying to get to. Um, I have been running this through burp. So we'll come over here and see, um, you know, I can get this, uh, main page here that, that just requires kind of the static JSS, um, and then, or CSS, JS, et cetera. Um, and then I have these post requests to API slash get facts. And so the first one. Um, and this actually comes, we'll notice this, we do a reload here. Um, when I reload this page, I can actually see, um, let's sort by number, there we go. Um, this get request comes and right afterwards, there is a get request for get facts there as well. So um, that just comes on the load of the page. It passes uh, the type of spooky. And then what comes back is an array of spooky facts, right? The facts that we see in the table. Um, so then when we switch it to not spooky facts, um, we get another post request here and some more, you know, the type is not spooky. And then if we come back over here and hit the secret facts, we can see post secret. And this time we see current, currently this type can only be accessed through localhost. So um, let's figure out how to get that. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at the source code. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up VS code on this directory. And we can start by taking a look at the Docker file. So the Docker is gonna be an Alpine instance. Um, install some stuff, change some things. It's gonna run nginx, um, and then it's gonna copy entrypoint.sh into the root and run it. So let's take a look at entrypoint.sh. Um, this is securing the entry point, um, making, initializing and starting the database, waiting for the database to start. And then here comes the part where we're actually piping the, all this stuff. These are commands piped into the MySQL database. So we create a database named Web, web Juggling Facts. We use that database, we create a table, um, and then we insert into the into the facts table, fact and fact type these values. So here's some spooky ones. Um, if we scroll down, we'll probably get some, here's some not spooky ones. If we go to the very bottom, here we have the one secrets and it's got the flag, although not the real flag, but presumably in the real instance has a real flag there. Um, let's jump up. We can, we can jump up to the challenge here and take a look at our index.php. Um, it starts with this SPL autoload register function. Um, this is basically just a way of kind of pulling in all these other things so that we can uh, include them so that we can then reference them. Um, we create our database connection here. Um, like, so this database object had to be brought in from elsewhere. Um, we also have our router, which includes Git on the, on the root of the file system, or the file system, the web server, and uh, post to API get facts. So th this is what we saw looking at the site. We can see both of those are functions. So like this is in the index controller, the function index, and in the index controller, the function get facts. So let's go check out the controllers. We'll come to the index controller. And very quickly, we can see here's the function for index, and it just returns this view of uh, index. Nothing fancy, but we didn't expect anything fancy there. And then we have get facts, and we'll, we'll take a little deeper look at this. So it's gonna do a file get contents on PHP slash slash input. That is basically reading the body of the request. And it's going to then JSON decode that into JSON data. So it's gonna take our JSON data and make a uh, dictionary object we can use. Um, then if that's empty or if the key type doesn't exist, we're gonna return and say, this is a bad request. Now we're gonna say, if the type equals secrets and the server remote address, so whoever's reaching out, you know, me in this case, um, is not localhost, then return this, you know, this JSON, which just says message currently can only be seen through localhost. That's exactly what we saw when we looked in Burp. Um, if we make it pass there, which we would have for the other types, 
it's going to do a switch on JSON data type. And so the way a switch statement works is it's basically going to do is secrets equal to this? If so, run this. And then if typically you'll see either like in this case, it returns, so it doesn't, it won't continue beyond that because it returns um, or like a break statement that says, you know, exit out of the switch loop. If it doesn't, it'll just keep going and run the same ones, whether the comparisons are true or not. Um, but so then we have another comparison. So like if the case is equal to spooky, do this one. If the case is not spooky, do this one. If it's anything else, send invalid type. So the real question is, how are we going to get to right here? Um, because we are not localhost, and that's what our remote address is going to show. Um, we could try doing things like um, X forwarded for headers or things that try to trick somehow this remote address variable. But given the name of this challenge, juggling facts, um, I'm going to immediately draw into an idea of a vulnerability called type juggling. And specifically, it has to do with how PSP, uh, PHP evaluates things. We'll see right here, it's got three equal signs and that's a tight comparison. So not only do the values have to be the same, but the type of the variables have to be the same. Um, but if there's only two equal signs here, it would be just if the values are the same, not the types. So let's take, um, let's go up here and we can do, let's, let's look at the switch statement. So if we take a look at the PHP switch statement, we can go to the documentation for that. We will see going down a little bit, um, right here, note, the switch statement does a loose comparison, of two equal signs. And if we look at that, we get actually a really nice table here. Let's make this big. Um, you know, I'll come down here. Here's the comparison, the strict comparison, or I was calling it tight, um, with three equal signs. And what you'll see is of all these different things, they're basically only equal down this diagonal. And that's because true is equal to true. If I try to compare true to one, even though they're both kind of the same in the value sense. Like we think of one as being true or anything non-zero as being true. Um, they're not the same type. So this is a Boolean, this is an integer, so it's gonna fail. If we come up here and look at the loose comparison, can I get that on the screen right? There we go. True equals true, but also one is true for a loose comparison because both those things are true. Similarly, like false and zero are the same. So if I compared false and zero, those are actually gonna be equal. Um, so the case we're dealing with is a comparison between a string, which is, let's see, find this, um, like this string, like secrets right here and our input. And so if our, the, the, the equivalent in this table is this PHP string. So obviously we could get a match if our PHP string, you know, if we passed in the string secrets, but we've already shown we can't reach this point in the code with that. If we look across this row though, uh, highlight the whole thing for you here, uh, there's another true, and that is the, word, the true. So if I, if I can figure out how to pass in a Boolean that will be compared to this string, the, the comparison will work. Um, let's actually jump over into a um, Python, or a Python, a PHP terminal. So I can do PHP minus A, and I'm gonna run kind of a dummy switch statement here. So I'm gonna do switch, and let's see, we'll, we'll start off by saying like, X is equal to secret. And then we can say switch, and I'm gonna do this all on one line so that I can easily up arrow and get back to it. It's gonna make it a little bit harder to read, but um, hopefully this still works for y'all. Um, so if I do that, there's my switch statement. Now I can do things like case um, secret, and in for secret, I'm gonna do echo secret, and, and, and then I'll break. And then I can do case um, not, I don't know, I don't know why I'm, not like that, not, and oops, I don't put the, that's in the wrong place, there we go. So for not, we're gonna do echo, not, and we'll break again, and then we can do default. We can do every, everything else. Semicolon there, and so if I hit enter right now, assuming I don't have any typos in here, what this is gonna do is it's gonna set x equal to secret, and then it's gonna say, Switch on X. So is X equal to secret? Yes. So it's going to echo secret and break and be done. So that worked. Uh, what if I set X equal to not? Now what I expect to happen is it'll switch on X. So is a secret equal to not? No. Is not equal to not? Yes. Echo not, break, be done. And that works. Uh, so if I set it to anything else, say OXDF, um, Interesting, we didn't even get everything else. Oh, I did, because it doesn't have an echo statement in here. Let's try fixing this. 
There we go. So it prints everything else. So the question we have is, what happens if I set OFCF or set X equal to true? And I get secret. And that's because it, if it hits this first comparison, says, is the string secret equal to the Boolean true? Loose comparison. So yes, echo secret, break, exit the loop. Back in what we have here, if I can get this to be true, then it's going to run this first one, return secrets, and be done. So what we'll do is we'll come over here into burp, and we will uh, grab this request, right click on it, send it to repeater, jump over into repeater, and here now I have the request. Um, I can send this just by itself to make sure it still works. Um, okay, it's looking normal. What I'm going to do now is delete secrets and put back true. And now when I send this, we get back the facts. We get back this flag. So pretty cool. Type juggling is really fascinating. Um, it comes into play in all sorts of ways. Um, this is an interesting one in the switch statement. Um, you kind of classically see it for comparing MD5 hashes to, um, or any hashes, because um, these hex numbers, if they start with zero, can get can get really funky in the way they do comparisons. Um, there's a whole presentations on that. Um, we've had some hack the box machines that did that as well. So, um, but it's fascinating. Um, but we won't go too much deeper in it today. Um, thanks for sticking around with me till the end, and uh, I will talk to you next time.